Welcome to NAP Solution Series program titled Developing an Advanced Technology Center in Your Community. My name is Sandy Hudson. The Solution Series programs are available at no cost to NAOP members. These mini webinars run less than 30 minutes and our goal is to provide you with some quick tips and insights, all types of strategies and tactics to help you succeed in today's business environment. Do you have a suggestion for a topic? Please email us at solutions at naop.org to let us know what topics you would like to hear about in future programs. Please advance to the next slide. Some topics require a more in-depth discussion than we can cover in a solution series time frame. And for that, NAP offers 90-minute webinars. These webinars are fully interactive and allow you to submit questions to the presenters. The next full webinar takes place on Tuesday, March 13th. During this webinar, you'll hear how you can add a little logistical leverage to your next project. Our speakers will examine the logistical drivers users factor into the location of the distribution and manufacturing facilities they occupy. The cost is $65 for NAOP members and $95 for non-members. You can register online at naop.org slash webinars. Next slide, please. And now let's get on with our program. With us today is Jack Roach, Vice President of Workforce Development at Florence Darlington Technical College and Director of the Southeastern Institute of Manufacturing and Technology in Florence, South Carolina. Jack has been with Florence Darlington Technical College since 2003. His areas of responsibility include corporate workforce development training and continuing education programs. Additionally, he manages the daily operations of the Southeastern Institute of Manufacturing and Technology, an advanced state-of-the-art facility which opened in 2007. This institute provides technical services in the areas of additive manufacturing, rapid prototyping, virtual reality, CAD design, and advanced machining to clients ranging from startup entrepreneurs to Fortune 500 companies. Welcome, Jack. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Sandy. It's good to be here. Our agenda this afternoon, we're going to cover three basic areas. What is the SIMT? Why it exists? What sort of capabilities, services, and facilities do we have here? And why or how it all happened? First of all, what is the SIMT? It's a planned, multi-building, 146-acre campus designed to provide business and industry clients with training, services, and resources necessary to be successful in today's competitive global marketplace. And it's something to point out here that even though we're owned by a technical college, our services are not aimed at college students. We're here to serve the needs of business and industry. Why we exist, there's really three main topics or three main bullets why we exist. One is to provide an economic development asset for the northeastern region of South Carolina. Secondly, we're here to support the manufacturers already existing in the southeastern U.S., although we're not limiting ourselves strictly to the United, southeastern United States, but, but all over the country. And third, we're here to provide a revenue stream to generate income to be a self-sustaining, self sufficient operating unit of Florence Darlington Technical College essentially become a profit center to return money back to the rest of the college. The types of things we do, we do workforce training, obviously being associated with a college. One of our primary missions is to train people. Secondly, we provide technical support services. We'll get into more of these in a little more detail later. And the facility itself is available. We rent out facility spaces for a variety of uses for both business and industry as well as the community. In training, the things we get into relate to the manufacturing and business operations, particularly things like business processes. We get involved with things like Six Sigma and lean manufacturing training, information technology. We also get into the actual manufacturing operations on a factory shop floor where we would have training available for people like CNC machine operators or programmers. We get involved in areas such as mechatronics or industrial maintenance and factory automation or robotics. And third, we get into the areas what we call soft skills training. We deal with loop leadership and supervisory skills, health, health and safety training, things related to the people aspects of, of a business uh, operating. In the technical solutions area, one of the first things we get involved with is engineering design and CAD modeling. We work with both entrepreneurs as well as small companies who don't always have their own in-house 
design staff. We provide CAD support for developing new products as well as training people who become CAD operators for those companies. And we even do things like design for manufacturing workshops where clients have a need to evaluate their product design to make it easier and better to manufacture. In the picture shown on this particular slide, uh, one of the, one, the projects we started out with in the early days is on the right-hand side. If you actually went to Home Depot's website in Christmas of 2009, you could have purchased this product. We worked with an entrepreneur, a lady who came in to see us, had this idea for a Christmas ornament and lights storage unit. We did the design work for her and eventually the prototyping of the product, which the, she then took out and marketed to giant big box retailers and ended up ultimately selling some through Home Depot's website in Christmas of 2009. The lower left image also illustrates another type of a service we, we do, uh, and that's laser scanning. We can take an existing object or an existing component that a company may have that doesn't have any computer data associated with it. We can laser scan that product or device and create computer data from the scanned image. Once we have computer data, then we can go on to the next steps. Uh, we have a rapid prototyping or additive manufacturing center in the facility. This is a technology that's used to take computer data and generate prototype components or unique low volume production parts directly from computer data without any tooling, without machining, or without molding. The processes themselves generate a part by adding material only where it's required based on the computer data to create a part from raw material. We have three basic processes that are used to do this. We have stereolithography, selective laser centering, and fused deposition modeling technologies, which are the three main technologies in the marketplace today to do rapid prototyping or additive manufacturing. Looking at the pictures on this slide, the upper right picture is actually a shot from one of our rapid prototyping labs. The parts in the foreground are some components we have manufactured in the machines you see sitting behind them. The lower right-hand corner, we have our machine shop where we have CNC machining equipment as well as manual milling and lathes and water jet cutting. This is an area where we do both training as well as small quantity prototyping runs for a customer who needs that service. The picture to the lower left is a product we actually did the prototype work for one of our local industries that makes cutting torches. What you see in this picture is not a real cutting torch. It's a prototype built in one of our machines made out of plastic. This part was used by the client to go to a trade show in Europe to introduce a new line of cutting torches before he had even manufactured the first production parts. So the service was something that was very valuable to them in order to bring a new product to market and actually get production orders before they built the first one. Another technology we have in our center is our 3D virtual reality center. This is an area where we take computer data again, 3D CAD data or other computer assets that a client might have. We can create interactive content where they can use the software and, and the assets that they already have to do a variety of things like new product introductions, sales and marketing, training for production operations, or even manufacturing process simulations. If a client wants to use this technology and doesn't want to procure their own equipment or hardware, we also have facilities here that they can use and equipment we have available for rental or lease so they can use that as they need it, not on a full-time basis. The pictures you see here in the top right-hand side of the screen is actually an image of some folks standing in our 10-foot interactive cave, which is a fully immersive interactive 3D environment. You see here they have on 3D glasses in the image as well as they have instrumentation on their hands so that they can interact with this particular 3D environment in 3D space and it will respond to their actions and their movements. Directly below that in the lower right-hand corner of the screen is the same cave where we've taken the side walls and opened them up to create one large 30-foot wide screen. This can be used for large audience presentations, large groups that the cave when it's folded up doesn't really uh, present itself as, as a convenient way to do that. So we can open it up and have larger audiences see things in 3D environment. To the left of the picture here is actually a simulation we did for a local company, a power company. 
where we went in and actually laser scanned the interior of a building, created a 3D model of that laser scan, and then created a simulation that helped them do maintenance on this facility. There was these large water tanks you see in that image there. There's a red tank in the, in the middle of the picture that they had to remove with an overhead crane. What we were able to do was to actually save them several days of downtime in manipulating this tank and getting it out by showing them the proper way to get it out with the crane that they already had in the facility and not have to remove all the structures that have been erected around these tanks over the last 40 years. Save this company a lot of money. You can imagine the power plant, a day's downtime is worth about a million dollars in a nuclear power plant. Next is the actual building itself. We have facilities that we rent out in this, in this building. We have everything from a conferencing center in the top left-hand picture. It's about a 12,000 square foot space, fully opened up like you see it here, that can be used for anything from a formal banquet to an industrial trade show and anything else that you can imagine using the space for. It has projection systems. You can see here there's screens coming down from the walls and there's projectors that drop down out of the ceiling or formal presentations. And we can also subdivide the space. There's sliding wall panels that close it down into smaller areas if we need that for smaller group settings. Additionally, in the lower right-hand corner of the screen, you see our auditorium. We have an 800-seat auditorium. It can be used for presentations, training sessions, uh, industrial and, and business meetings. We're not really a performing arts theater. That's not what we do. But we have capabilities here that are very good for audiovisual presentations, including a 3D stereo image capability where a client can use the facility for a large audience stereo image presentation or, and, and capability. <clears throat> Excuse me. We also have the training rooms you see in the top right. We have a variety of shapes and sizes of training rooms that we use for both the training we do as well as we rent those out to client companies to hold employee meetings or do training of their own. And then we have a really nice executive meeting room in the lower left-hand corner that companies come in and use on a daily basis to hold meetings and client presentations and things like that that take advantage of our facility. Additionally, these pictures you see on the next slide are just a variety of informal places and, and spaces in the building where clients and, and students can sit and relax and enjoy the environment. The other point I want to mention here is in the middle of the screen, we have both Florence and Darlington counties that have their economic development offices in our building. So we have one of the few places in the country where we have competing counties both housed in the same facility doing their economic development work out of our facility. The next question I always get is how did this happen and, and what did it cost and how did it get paid for? This was originally the vision of the president of Florence Darlington Technical College, Dr. Charles Gould. This was about in the year 1999 and 2000. He saw a need to support high-tech manufacturing, both in a workforce development environment as well as other technical services. It fits in nicely with what the college has in our mission for the economic development of the area to support that activity. We're quite involved in that as a college. And additionally, we saw that state funding for higher education was declining and would probably decline even more, which it has done in the last several years. So we were looking for ways to enhance our revenue streams and become a profit center for the college to su supplant and replace the state funding that we no longer get. So we're looking for ways to support ourselves. Once he brought this idea to the College Board of Commissioners, they bought into the idea and they purchased the 146 acre site that we're sitting on in 2000. This is an actual component or excuse me, a piece of property that's directly behind the existing main college campus. At the time it was purchased it was actually a farm, it was a cotton field. Uh, they've paid about 1.3 to 1.4 million dollars for that piece of property at that time and it was done with existing college funds. When it came time to actually construct the first phase of the SIMT, which is our advanced manufacturing center, the building we're in today. Uh, it's a 177,000 square foot, two-story building. It was constructed in uh, 2005 to 2007. 
and the funding for that came from a variety of sources. We had about $2 million in state of South Carolina funds that was left over from the last state bond bill from 1999. That money was used to help us do the architectural and engineering design work. We got about a $2 million federal economic development grant, which was used to do part of the site preparation work. We used about $6.5 million of cash that the college had accumulated in anticipation of this project. And then when it came time to actually build the building, the college issued $25 million in bonds that are guaranteed by a tuition set aside from all the students that we have. We actually had Standard of Poor's and Moody's come in and do a bond rating on the college at that time so we could issue our own bonds. When it came time to put furnishings and equipment in the facility, this is where we got some additional state funding and we continue to get state funding. It's a recurring line item, budget item. It's been going on since about 2005 and we've received approximately $8 million to date to put the latest state-of-the-art equipment in this facility. What we have for future plans, as I mentioned earlier, this is a planned multi-facility site. So far we've constructed the first facility. Today we're under construction with our second facility. It's a manufacturing business incubator center under construction today. and We hope to be open in there in July of this year. The whole purpose of that facility is to provide a home with assets and resources to make uh, startup entrepreneur businesses successful. There's no educational component to that facility. It's strictly a business incubator to help grow jobs in the local economy, promote the economic development of our region. Beyond that, we've got several other facilities we think will be in demand as we go forward to meet the needs of business and industry. The second or the third one would be our industrial, environmental, and energy center. With today's focus on the environment and with energy consumption, we think there's a need there to support business and industry with both trained workforce as well as technology that could be used in their in their own facilities. Additionally, we're looking at industrial R&D center. This is a facility where an existing company that needs temporary space to either try new machinery, new equipment, train operators on a new piece of equipment or process would have a temporary home where they could do that so they don't have to build more brick and mortar facilities at their own plants. They could rent this on a part-time or short-term basis. Beyond that, we're looking at a business excellence center, which will be focused more on soft skills training related to business operations and management, and a health and safety training center aimed at all the safety and, and health issues related to manufacturing and business environment. And we're also looking at a chemical and biological technology center. We have a chemical biological industry component in our local area that we need to serve both from a technical and a training perspective. And then the center eight is yet to be determined. Each of these buildings would be constructed as the time uh, becomes necessary and the financing becomes available to fill a market need. In summary, what we've done here has been a very interesting project. Uh, our timing was not the best. We opened in late 2007. Then the economy had the downturn in 2008. But in spite of that, we've had a pretty good growth rate year over year since we've been open. Our community use of the facilities continues to grow. We use the facility or allow people to come in and use the facility in three broad areas. It has to be related to business and industry or education and nonprofits or economic development. We don't rent out the facility for things like wedding receptions and personal parties. That's just not what we do. We also are deeply involved in the economic development of what's going on around here, as I said earlier. Since we've been open, we've had four new major company announcements in the area. Uh, Monster.com has opened a national call center where they actually brought jobs back to the U.S. from overseas. H.J. Hines is, has constructed a new food processing plant in the area. Johnson Controls is in the process of constructing an automotive battery recycling plant. And Otis Elevator just recently announced that they will be opening a new state-of-the-art, new generation elevator manufacturing plant just down the street from us. We can't say that we were totally the reason why they came to this area, 
but we know we were influential and, and helped get that done. We're really proud of our facility and what we've accomplished so far. If you have any questions, you can contact me at the following address. Jack, thanks for a great presentation and discussing the development of the Southeastern Institute of Manufacturing and Technology and its future projects. Our next Solution Series program on changes needed in zoning codes to accommodate smart growth will be available on March 20th. Watch your email for NAOP source, our corporate e-newsletter, for the program link. Thank you for listening to our session and have a good day.